Hello, and we are now live with Naveen Jain, the CEO and founder of Viom. But when we search your name, usually a photo comes up with you in zero gravity or holding some piece of a rock that is not from Earth. So um, share with us briefly what you did before you started Viom. Well, you know, that's my another moonshot, Maya, which is really about finding a way to make humanity a multi-planetary society, because otherwise all of us at some point of time are likely to become dinosaurs uh, if our spacecraft somehow gets destroyed, either by a large asteroid or we humans are pretty capable people ourselves of destroying it. So why not distribute ourselves into multiple planets so at least as a species we can survive? So uh, what was your previous moonshot before you started this? So that's, that was my moonshot was essentially um, going to the moon as a first stepping stone to really settle, um, uh, settle humanity outside the planet Earth. And my second moonshot really is now is about making illness optional because I really believe there is no reason whatsoever for any one of us to suffer from any chronic illness because unlike, uh, you know, many of what I would say in factory communicable diseases that, you know, all of our chronic diseases start in the gut. And as Hippocrates said 2,000 years ago, that all diseases begin in the gut. And he says the one man's food is another man's poison. And, you know, also let food be thy medicine, let thy medicine be the food. So, I mean, for some reasons, we have forgotten all the learnings we have had for thousands of years, that there is no reason that we have to be sick, whether we uh, call these symptoms uh, uh Alzheimer or Parkinson's or depression or anxiety or obesity or diabetes or you know IBD, IBS, autoimmune disease or cancer. Every one of these things are really just chronic inflammation. Okay, so Naveen, let's go back uh, to microbiome one on one before we dive into that. Yeah. Um, and I will also be using my personal. Uh, yeah. microbiome results. I'm going to uh, lift myself up here a little bit here so my, I'm not looking down on camera here. So let me see if I can raise myself, raise my level of awareness here. There we are. Okay. So and down. I want to talk about all these big ideas yeah. uh, of uh, eradicating illnesses. Uh, but also I'm curious if you can explain why my microbiome is so uh, disappointing, and I will be sharing my results. Um, so you know what, let's just dive in. I see that more people are joining us. Um, so I am live with Naveen Jain, the CEO and founder of Viome. Um, Naveen, you and I met at a conference about the future of medicine where the theme was the three Ps, uh, precision, personalized, preventative medicine, yes. and the, I was amazed at how um, microbiome was so heavy on the program um, for the first year uh, that I see that it is so uh, prominent. Um, so Maya, why don't you describe for 101, what is microbiome? <laughs> okay, so you know what? I see that Helen, uh, Helen is your uh, chief medical uh, officer, yes. right? Yes. Uh, and if she can join us, um, she, she might be great uh, to share with us. Let's see if we can have Helen join us and we can go deep, deep into the science of microbiome before we go up to moonshots. She's um, there. I think she's on. She says. Okay, let's see if we can do that. I let Helen know. Great. Um, so I don't I see her yet. Um, we, I see Helen, but I can't see her on video. Um, Helen, are you on audio or video? I'm, I should be here. I'm having some internet, um, issues in and out, so I don't want to overreach the bandwidth. Can you hear me? I can, we can hear you Helen. perfectly well, but we just can't see your yes. uh, lovely okay. smiling face. <laughs> um, you know what, Helen, since we can't see you, uh, I'm going to bring up um one of my results and 
Let's see. Okay. Um, I so show the human RNA. I hope everyone can see this. This is uh, one of my uh, rather. Maya, than... why don't you show the human RNA? That's probably more interesting. Okay, let's start with that. Even though I do want to know why um, why my diversity is so like I've been really investing in uh, diverse food. Um, <laughs> I think you must have taken you must have taken antibiotics uh, a lot, and that's probably what's causing your uh, you know microbiome to die. And Actually, uh, right before I took this particular test, I had. Um, uh, my appendix removed, and I was in the hospital with uh, antibiotics, um, yep. IV for uh, for about five days. So, so that, that, that may explain it, and uh, already I feel a little bit better. Uh, but Helen, we have you, uh, and I'd like to go over some quick questions, um, uh, like very quickly, what is the microbiome? How much of it do we have? Uh, where uh, specifically it is in the body, how can we affect it, and then uh, don't go into that details yet because I want to do a quick game of uh, what does microbiome have to do with uh, immune system, natural birth, and I have some other keywords to throw in the air uh, that have been related to microbiome uh, in the recent years. Uh, but let's start with a really quick uh, answer from you to what is the human microbiome? Okay, can you hear me all right? Yes. yes. Perfect. So the human microbiome is really the collection of microorganisms. So those microorganisms are bacteria, they can be mold, they can be fungi, they can be viruses. The collection of all of these microorganisms that live on and in the human body. Collectively, we call that the microbiome. Now, the majority, we have them on every single surface of our body, and in every body tissue, we have microbes living. Altogether, those are the, like, we refer to everything as the microbiome. Now, the largest collection of these microbes live in our gut. And so, all the way down our digestive tract, we have microorganisms, and we have the biggest by far collection, over 40 trillion of them living in our large intestine, the bottom part, or we call it our colon. And those microorganisms are supposed to be there. You know, we used to think that microbes are bad, right? Microbes mean infection, but that's not the case. We need those microbes to, to help us live. They help us perform almost every, every bodily function you can think of. And they actually protect us from the bad microorganisms. So they're a very important part of who we are. Um, uh, so Helen, let's name a few specific roles that they play that uh, otherwise we would not be able to uh, perform. So one of the main things that if we focus on the microorganisms in our gut, so if we talk about the gut microbiome, the first thing they help us do, which can be kind of obvious, is they help us digest and absorb our food. So we wouldn't be able to get the nutrients from our food if it weren't for these microbes. They also make a whole bunch of nutrients for us. So we depend on a lot of the, the vitamins and other things um, that are made by the microbiome, amino acids, all of those uh, what we consider basic nutrients are made by microbes, and then we absorb them and use them. So that's um, so a, a Helen, if we see um, deficiencies when we do a blood test, um, which one of these are related to poor microbiome balance, for example? Um, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure what the, the deficiency in the blood test, do you mean nutrient deficiencies or yes. do you mean, yes. yeah, uh, a lot no. of them. Uh, yeah. So it, because we need the microbes to absorb the nutrients from our food and because the microbes make the nutrients for us, I would say that any type of deficiency you see in the blood, you have to look at the microbe first to see why that's happening. 
But Maya, I want to just add to something that Dr. Massey mentioned that here, that microbiome is not just about, as he was saying, is about digesting the food and providing us the nutrients. To large extent, a large part of our bodily functions are controlled and influenced by our microbiome. Um, and whether it's our immune system is trained by our microbiome. And that's the reason why you start to see when your microbiome is imbalanced, you get a lot of the low-grade chronic inflammation, which is the root cause of almost every single chronic disease, including cancer. The other part that I find most fascinating is that our brain is controlled by our microbiome. So there is a gut-brain axis, it's called vagus nerve, and unlike Vegas, uh, Las Vegas, what happens in the gut doesn't quite stay in the gut, it impacts our brain, it impacts our body. And really the key is that a lot, you know, our microbiome uh, uses the microRNA interference in our amygdala, in our prefrontal cortex, and in, to some extent controls our behavior, controls our, our decision making. In addition to that, many of the things, the neural diseases such as depression and anxiety and a lot of these things are directly related to our microbiome. And I would love Dr. Massey to have maybe a little bit more on that. Yeah, yeah you so know, I, I was getting that. That was the next, those were the next yeah. ones. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I am featuring right now my personal uh, results and the one that is um, quite disturbing to me. And I would like to stay for a moment on inflammation, RNA, um, what does that tell us perhaps as an age biomarker? Um, and if this is what we're looking to see improve over time as we optimize our diet according to microbiome. Um, so Helen, I know that was a bit long, um, but I know that uh, RNA is one thing we're looking at. So uh, over to you about microbiome inflammation and health. Yeah, absolutely. And the reason um, the microbiome is so intimately uh, controls inflammation is because the majority of our immune system, 70 to 80 percent of our immune system lives in the lining of our gut. And right on the other side of that lining is our microbiome. So our microbiome actually trains our immune system from infancy, our immune system ability to recognize what is our self and what is not our self, what the bad guys are, is trained by our microbiome. And then, of course, through our life, our microbiome controls our immune system. So it keeps it at a state where it's ready to react when it needs to, but it shouldn't overreact. So that's the ideal state. Now, unfortunately, when you get an imbalance in the microbes, uh, then that can either go in one direction or the other, where it doesn't doesn't react, your immune system doesn't react enough and you can get prone to infections or in most cases it can overreact and you get what we call chronic inflammation. And so that's why the immune system is so tightly controlled to inflammation or I mean the microbiome is so tightly controlled to inflammation. So and, you were asking... Okay, so I'm loading this uh, new graph. This is uh, borrowed from age one. Uh, it's a new accelerator for healthspan biotech companies uh, in San Francisco. And where they explain some of the science of longevity there. And they show this um, graph where your, um, where your uh, lifespan um, is uh, reduced exponentially um, or your um, uh, your, I can't see the exact uh... rate, rate, rate of death is exponentially increases by age. So that means as you age, your chances of dying becomes higher and more exactly. and more. <laughs> exactly, exponentially. And the same graph applies to uh, heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. Um, That's right. What do we know about each of these and uh, microbiome? Where is our science on that at this point? Yeah, so there have been numerous studies that have linked all of those diseases to the microbiome. So there has been an association found with all of those chronic diseases and disruptions in the microbiome. So uh, one of the, the factors that underlie each of those chronic diseases is an inflammatory component. 
And that also ties back to the microbiome. So clearly, um, the, a healthy microbiome goes a long way to protecting you from, from a lot of these diseases, and an imbalanced microbiome can start to make you susceptible to those diseases. And of course, go ahead, Naveen. I was saying gonna... was that especially the two or three things that you mentioned, the cancer, there were very recent studies that are done that the breast cancer and in fact very recently last week there was a research that came out about pancreatic cancer. Both of them in a pancreatic cancer, the microbes move from gut to pancreas and they shut down the immune system causing the cancer to grow and, um, and that was very recent research. And similarly, the Mayo Clinic published research on the microbiome and uh, breast cancer. And other interesting part was there were several research that were published uh, in the last six months. And all of them are related to whether your immunotherapy uh, works for your cancer treatment or does not work, depends on your microbiome. Or in fact, the chemotherapy, whether it works or in fact it may kill you, depends on your microbiome. So this really is the key is... Um, your heart diseases, it really comes from the low-grade inflammation. And what they found was that it is the lipids produced by the microbiome that causes the inflammation in the arteries, not the lipids that you actually eat. So it's really the microbiome producing the lipids that actually is the one that's causing the arteries inflammation. And you start to look at other chronic diseases that kill uh, humans, um, and including aging, um, and there was a very interesting research on how microbiome talks to mitochondria, which also happens to be an ancient bacteria, and how they are communicating in the in in terms of aging. That as your microbiome gets imbalanced, is communicating with mitochondria and essentially causing a lot of the age-related uh, diseases and aging itself. Uh, with that, Dr. Messier, your turn. Uh, so, mm -hmm. Helen, uh, one last question from me to you. Uh, and thank you for joining us. And um, and I would like to also invite uh, our viewers, if you have any question um, on the science of microbiome to Helen. Um, she is the chief medical officer at Viome. You're welcome to ask now. Um, so Helen, a question from me, and here again are my results uh, from the microbiome sequencing and your diet recommendations to me. Um, so how come uh, salmon is on my to indulge list, whereas tuna is on my to minimize list? Like I can I can understand white rice and cane sugar or even dates, uh, but why not tuna? Mm -hmm. So one of the things we do with Viome that is different than any other company or researcher out there is we're able to identify exactly what your microbes are doing. So we can see what your microbes are eating, we can see what they're producing, and we can see how they're interacting with each other. And one of the really interesting things is we see microbes uh, uh, metabolizing toxins. We see that in a lot of different people. So if you think about it, you know, we use microbes to clean up oil spills, right? So microbes have the ability to pretty much eat anything <laughs> that's out there. And so one of the things that's not our biggest detox organ is really our microbiome. It's not our liver, as we've always assumed. And so we depend on our microbes to actually uh, metabolize a lot of these toxins that we're exposed to. So in many cases, we know that tuna is a much more contaminated fish than salmon is because it's a much larger fish you know they have the ability to accumulate toxins over time so when we see uh, that your microbiome is being exposed to a lot of toxins often the recommendation will be to avoid those toxic foods uh, so would does that mean that tuna is your on to minimize list pretty much for everyone or only for those who uh, show certain results it would be more for those who show that they have a lot of exposure to toxins through, okay. the, through what their microbiome is doing. Um, and, and in most, unfortunately, that is a lot of people, as we've seen across our data set. You know, we do not live in a very uh, clean environment. We are exposed to a lot of toxins, and, and that's been really surprising. We see people's microbes 
metabolizing all kinds of different toxins, you know, toxins coming from plastics and from pesticides. And, um, you know, we, we are exposed to a lot of those. Other thing, Helen, would you want to talk about like how sometimes we tell people not to eat spinach or uh, other things that people think are really good, like pomegranate juice or things like that, that mm-hmm. are just counterintuitive? Yeah. Or some other, yeah. like I, I've seen you uh, say not to eat avocado yeah. um, and, and some superfoods. So, yes, let's quickly explain yeah. uh, that. Exactly. So some of, so our microbiome, as I said, they, they're the first ones that are exposed to everything that we take in. So the, what they do is they metabolize these foods and sometimes they can metabolize components in food to something that's very beneficial for us. Sometimes it can be just neutral and sometimes it can be really harmful. So depending on what microbes you have and what they're doing, Certain components in food can, like spinach, for example, um, you uh, can be metabolized or neutralized by your microbes. So if you have the microbes that are, have the, you know, the capacity or the ability to neutralize some of the toxins that are contained in spinach, spinach can be very good for you. If you don't have those microbes, then you really want to avoid spinach because that can, uh, an accumulation can be harmful. The same thing um, with something called elagic acid. That's a component of foods that's found in uh, pomegranates and raspberries and walnuts. Uh, Those are always considered healthy foods. And one of the reasons is a Elagic acid can get turned into something called urolithin A. And that urolithin A is an antioxidant, it's anti-inflammatory. But that only happens if you have the microbes that have the ability to do that conversion. So in some people, those will be very healthy foods. And in other people, they won't get the same benefit from those foods. Okay. So it, it really is dependent on your unique microbiome. And it's different for everyone. Not everyone has the ability to do that. Helen, thank you so much. Before you leave, there's a question here for you from Ari Manol, um, an entrepreneur in Israel. Uh, and Ari asks, can you redesign gut microbiome in a stable, long, uh, long-term, long-range way? Uh, so a short answer from you, and then we'll take that answer uh, to Naveen too. Absolutely. So we can modulate and, and change the microbiome based on what we feed it. You can do it with probiotics and prebiotics, but it's never a one-time deal. You can't just redesign it and leave it. It has to be a continual thing. You have to, you have to keep working at maintaining that. And it's, you know, we get exposed to things in our environment like stress or, you know, you might have taken those antibiotics like you mentioned, or we change our diet a little bit, then our microbiome will change again. So um, you have to continually uh, keep it in a balanced state by um, what you eat and by what you, you know, what you feed it. Okay. Helen, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Helen. Okay, uh, Naveen, so you have been quoted recently saying that uh, entrepreneurs are more important than the president. Uh, and I would like to read to you um, just a, a quote from a recent article in the New York Times saying, today the greatest threat to your lifespan may be the Trump administration's assault on public health and medical research. Um, So what did you mean by it? So what I meant to say is that really uh, that entrepreneurs are likely to become the next superpower. And the reason for that is that for the first time in the human history, the exponential technologies are allowing a small group of people to do things that could only be done by Fortune 500 companies or nation states or superpowers, such as we were talking about landing on the moon. It has only been done by three superpowers. And now we are the, you know, as you know, a Moon Express, the company that I started 10 years ago, is the only only company in the universe that has a permission to leave Earth orbit and land on the moon. So imagine when we land on the moon next year, we will become the first private company to ever do so. But more importantly, symbolically, we become the fourth superpower. 
as you look at Wyoming, um, you know, we have always had this healthcare system that, in fact, we're spending more and more money every year on healthcare, and people are getting sicker and sicker. Now, that is going to be solved by entrepreneurs. It's companies like us who are going to go out and fundamentally change healthcare, uh, fix education, create abundance of energy, create abundance of food, create abundance of fresh water. And these are the problems that were used to only could be done by the uh, superpowers and by entrepreneurs doing them. That's what really make the, uh, you know, the nation states irrelevant and the entrepreneurs are superpowers. So Naveen, I want to give you um the opportunity to say uh a little bit about viom because we yeah. jumped straight to some of my uh rather disappointing but hopefully oh. better next time uh gut results and we have a question here how do you know which microbes uh do you have there was another question um can you change it yes. um so i'd like to uh, refer to these two questions uh like what is viom And uh, this is your next moonshot. So yes. um, what are your hopes for it? Yeah. So essentially, uh, understanding what is happening inside your gut is a key to your health. And with a touch of a swab of a stool, we are able to do a complete RNA sequencing. Unlike every other microbiome company in the world, what they do is they call something called 16S sequencing, and they can barely see some set of bacteria only at a genus level. What Wyom does is very unique. This technology uh, came out of biodefense work at Los Alamos National Lab, where we have this exclusive license. And by a simple touch of a stool, we are able to find out every strain of every bacteria, every virus, phages, RNA virus, fungi, mold, yeast. But more importantly, we know how active they are. But even more important than that is what Is that they are actually producing that means we are able to see are you producing butyrate are you at uh, which is good for the human body or are you producing LPS which is lipopolysaccharide which essentially is going to cause inflammation we can look at all other short chain fatty acid all the vitamins all the nutrients And based on what they're producing and what they're doing, we are able to recommend very personalized diet that is designed just for you. You and I share 99.5% same DNA, but when it comes to our microbes, it's less than 5%. It is so unique that it is actually more unique than your fingerprint. And the thing is, your, your diet actually changes your microbes all the time. So there is, there is no such thing as universal healthy food or universal healthy diet. A diet that's good for you won't be good for me and a diet that's good for me today won't be good for me in three months or six months because as we change our diet our microbes are changing and if you don't keep them in tune what happens is you're only feeding one set of microbes and they start to grow and then you get imbalance again so it's like a finely tuned car our human body is a finely tuned machine that you have to constantly keep adjusting and balancing and if you keep it in tune uh, you can live forever <laughs> okay Um, so here are some of my uh, bacteria that you approved of um, and I am missing others and each person has some that are good for them other that are not so great um, in the future do you think we may be able to create a treatment where um, we know that in extreme cases today we um, You can get a stool transplant yes. um, in order to recover from various severe gut illnesses, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So taking uh, that therapy into health span and longevity, yes. do you think we may be able to compile um, a transplant of all the good bacteria that one needs to have, like a personalized balanced and keep balancing and optimizing that? when the goal is longevity and health span rather than uh, curing a particular disease. Yes, yeah, so, so Maya, as you know that it's, un, it's not really about the good bacteria or the bad bacteria. It's about good ecosystem or the bad ecosystem. In a sense that think of your gut microbiome as a collection like Amazon forest, right? Every step you take on the Amazon forest is a completely new different ecosystem, yet everything is lush and green. That means you can have a lush and green gut without having to be identical to each other. And they can all be very different. And, um, and so... 
So what really means is that can you, of course, there was a very recent study that came out where they looked at the 90 year olds who are completely healthy and the people who are 90 year olds who are sick. And they found the people who are healthy have the similar type of diversity and similar type of ecosystem as a 20 year old. That means that if you can stay at 90 and stay healthy is because your microbiome has remained in diverse and balanced. Right. And that means you're constantly eating diverse set of food and balancing your microbiome in terms of the activity. So they're producing the right set of nutrients and not producing any type of uh, toxins or inflammatory compounds or for that matter, any food that is causing um, a some type of low grade inflammation and avoiding the foods that cause the low grade inflammation um, essentially avoids having a system to deal with chronic inflammation, which causes the chronic disease. And aging is one of the chronic diseases that we talk about, right? So aging is not something that happens to you uh, because you caught aging. It happens over a long period of time, just like diabetes or obesity or autoimmune disease. It's not something you get up in the morning and I think I, I caught obesity. Right? It is something you develop a long period of time, just like aging. And there is no doubt in my mind that through the right diet and personalized diet, you'll be able to not only keep all these chronic diseases away, you'll also be able to live, live for as long as you want. Because at the end of the day, this uh, this is a, one of the chronic disease that we must get rid of uh, because no reason for us to be dying of aging, which is uh, has obviously been one of the worst possible chronic disease that kills everyone. Okay, so usually in longevity uh, science, we there's uh, a lot of research, uh, but it's still far from clinical trials and yeah. an actual product that you can use, um, and and we have quite a few questions relating to what can you do today? Uh, how soon does it affect your health? Um, so let's take some questions. Uh, Naveen, with you, I will show the question and uh, we will do quick Q&A. Uh, even though our time is up, I see quite a lot of uh, questions. So here's uh, the first one. So answer is that uh, based as soon as you do the test and you can go to viome.com, uh, V-I-O-M-E.com, you can sign up for the service. Um, and you know, a meta transcriptome to do an RNA sequencing normally would cost somewhere between $3,000 to $5,000 per test. Given the fact that we license this technology from the Los Alamos National Lab, we are able to do it for only for a couple of hundred dollars. That means for $399 initially and subsequent tests are only $199. You're able to find out what's happening in your gut and what's the diet that's good for you. And you're able to obviously change that. And it changed, you know, if you change your diet in the next two to three months, you are able to completely change your microbiome. And then you have to do a test again to make sure it continues to stay in balance. The top, okay. three, the top three actionable things that you can do to live healthy and longer is to keep your gut, uh, microbiome in balance. Uh, and number, that means avoid the food that cause low grade inflammation. And you can only know that by doing a biome test and understanding what's causing inflammation. Other things that are generic thing I can tell you are the things that obviously, you know, not, not letting the stress be caused and getting a good night's sleep is always good things to do. Um, how does this affect your brain? As you know, the 90% of serotonin is produced in the gut. Uh, in fact, a lot of the neurotransmitters uh, are either produced in the gut or consumed in the gut. If you ever heard of a gut feeling and when you are anxious, you get the butterflies in the stomach, it is really your gut and a brain communicating with each other. In fact, I would argue that your real brain is in your gut. So when your mom said, listen to your gut, she was a neuroscientist. And in fact, I would say the thing that's sitting on the top of our shoulder is simply the puppet that follows the direction from your gut. Uh, D91, it's known how exercise um, impacts the composition of one's my microbiome. The answer is absolutely yes. The exercise, uh, you know, increases the levels of the TCA. The exercise also causes the microbiome uh, to change. And there is a substantial change in the microbiome that happens with aerobic exercise. In fact, just by looking at a touch of your poop, we can tell you how much aerobic exercise you're getting. Um, 
So we, in fact, can learn just from that, you know, so don't ever leave your, leave your poop behind because we can learn so much that you, what kind of medicines you're taking, uh, do you have a joint pain, are you depressed, what kind of uh, food you're eating, are you on a ketogenic diet or paleo diet, all these things, by the way, are killing people. When you're on a paleo diet, you're eating too much protein that's actually feeding the protein fermenters that releases ammonia and the toxins that causes inflammation. When you're on a ketogenic diet or fasting, what happens is the microbes start to eat the mucus lining are creating a thinner epithelial barriers that causes the leaky gut and causes the inflammation. So, I mean, really protect yourself. Don't fall for these fat diet. Do what is right for your body, not for some, uh, what I would say, a, another fat diet. Um, Naveen, you uh, put on my to minimize both uh, like beer, coffee and wine. Um, so let me how, just tell you. how seriously do you mean that? But and what do you mean by uh, minimize? To so minimize really means is no more than one to two servings in a week. And the idea is this is not permanent. These are very temporary things based on what we see. So, for example, if we see a lot of endorphins being consumed by the microbiome, you want to reduce those endorphins by consu consuming less coffee. And as you, as I say that every, you know, every three months or so, your body will change and your microbes will change. And the next cycle around, maybe it will say it's okay for you now to be starting to indulge in the coffee because your body has come back into the balance. So none of these things are permanent. These are really based on what is happening in your gut today. And by able to essentially give it a relief that it needs so it can rebalance itself. Because if you're constantly stressing your uh, microbes, you're constantly stressing your immune system. Them, then you're always in the low grade inflammation so idea is to you know calm down the uh, uh, calm down the stress that's being uh, caused uh, to the immune system through these toxins in the microbiome are releasing so for those who joined us just now um, we hosted Naveen Jain uh, the CEO and founder of Viome our conversation was about what we can do in terms of personalized preventative precision uh, health span medicine uh, right now. And a final word from you, Naveen, before we end uh, our talk today. I would say is that, you know, there is nothing better I could do with my life to essentially help billions of people who are suffering through this chronic illness. And I really hope that Wyoming is the first step you can take, not only to help yourself, but to recommend that to all your friends, because someday we're going to look at this uh, movement and saying we were the generation that actually solved the problem of the chronic diseases. And, you know, we have the power. We now have the technology. We have the RT artificial intelligence, we have the underlying RNA sequencing at a price point that most people can afford and hopefully the price will continue to come down and my hope is to get a billion people uh, to use the service and one day live in a world where illness is truly a matter of choice, not a matter of bad luck. So my moonshot, help me achieve my moonshot of making illness optional. Thank you so much, Naveen Jain. I see more questions coming in. So this conversation can continue on the page where this live Facebook uh, talk is. Uh, thank you to all of, uh, all of you for joining and bye for now. Thank you very much.